this first article we will discuss about IPCC alarm bells, climate change effect worse than earlier estimate. So basically this article is important in the prelims and as well as mains exam is concerned. But while we are talking about the prelims exam, so IPCC is Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change. So the sixth assessment report has to be published as we can say and the syllabus is here prelims and mains, environment and ecology that means natural hazards. So basically the adverse impact of climate change are far greater, more frequent and vastly more disruptive than previously understood. So basically the, the assessment by intergovernmental panel on climate change IPCC. So basically in this article we discussed about the the vulnerabilities that has to be occurred in India like if you talk about like Ahmedabad and if you talk about like that is, is a maximum heat island has to be there and one is that like we can as we can see Mumbai has the high risk of sea level rise severe flooding and Ahmedabad urban heat island. So as we have cons like mains exam as you can see uh, the questions is has to be asked in the early, uh, previous year the urban flood that is the main issues in our country like urban flood. So how Mumbai is affecting from the urban flood. So Mumbai had high risk of sea level rise and the, if the sea level rise we just use the like uh, sea wall. But what is the impact of sea wall if you will use it that will not increase the sea level but you know what if the rain water occurs then the water of rain water is not going enter into the to the sea wall through the sea and the sea water is not going to enter if the and the separate rainwater uh, storage. So in that case is that we can say the urban flood has to be occurred. So similarly we can say like in the Ganga Saramati basins may faces water scarcity by 2050 as the IPCC report has to be concerned. So as we can see it here in this article like all state will be hit in the emission increase report as the IPCC warned it. So the world faces unavoidable multiple climate hazards over the next two decades with global warming of 15 degrees centigrade and ever even temporarily exceeding this warming level would mean additional severe impacts some in which will be irreversible according to a report by Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC. So basically IPCC has warned that some of the cities has to be most vulnerable. Uh, so we have to be uh, we have to be uh, command we have to be do something on that because uh, lots of uh, uh, you know uh, agreement has to be like Montreal protocol like the like the Paris agreement has to be concerned. So in this article we discuss like human induced climate change as you can see the this year including more frequent and intense extreme events has caused widespread adverse impact and damage of nature and people. So as we can see the recent that Kerala flood has affected many people. So urban flood is more vulnerable in terms of rural, rural flood because as we know that as we are aware about like in the urban part like most of the cities are not aware that the flood will be going to happen. So we do not have some kind of you know uh, protection plan so that we can aware earlier to the people. And as we can see in the prelims exam is here like Lucknow and Patna according to one of the several studies cited in the IPCC report are among the cities predicted to reach wet bulb temperature. So 35 degrees centigrade. If emission continue to rise, Bhubaneswar, Chennai, Mumbai, Indore and Ahmedabad are identified as the risk of reaching wet bulb temperatures of 32 to 34 degrees centigrade with continued emissions. Overall Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, Orisha, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and Punjab will be the most severely affected but if emission keeps rising all state will have regions that experience wet bulb temperature of 30 degrees centigrade. So basically if the continued rise and what it is going to be happen if the continued rise if the uh, if the temperature is going to be rise then what the what the impact on that environment first thing like the sea level rise second thing like the uh, coral reefs if the temperature is more high then the, the coral bleaching has to be started as we have a study like uh, Zuzanthali is going to be fading the color right and the third thing is what is going to be happen. So like uh, the flood ha uh, has to be occurred in that particular portion. So now we can see it here like heat, humidity, sea rise to make India 
अनइनहेबिटेबल ऑफ इन इमिशन नॉट कट आईपीसी रिपोर्ट वॉन्स ऑफ मलेरिया आउट ब्रेक इन हिमालय रीजन सो बेसिकली हीट ह्यूमिडिटी एंड सी राइस दैट द थ्री थिंग्स लाइक फर्स्ट इज हीट humidity sea rise to make india uninhabitable if emissions not cut so basically mumbai it had a high risk of severe flooding and sea level rise ahmedabad the serious case of urban heat island serious it is like as we have discussed chennai bhuvneshwar patna lucknow approaching den dangerous level of heat and humidity so basically that ipcc warns that now the things is beyond our uh, level so so what we need to do we have to plan something we have to be do some uh, you, uh, you know uh, some kind of redressal mechanism so that we can uh, save to such vulnerability so as we can see it here high tidal marine drive in july 2021 so lots of article has to be find in, uh, in, the, in the in the in the ipcc report is concerned so as we can see it here the here is ipcc sixth assessment report has warned of multiple climate change even if steps are taken to reduce greenhouse gas emission so lots of uh, you know uh, things like uh, greenhouse gas emission like montreal Porto, kyoto protocol kyoto is a city in uh, in uh, japan so then kyoto protocol we have discussed about to reduce the greenhouse gas emission below 2 degree centigrade what is new and what is the significance of this report so this uh, class we will discuss about what exactly the concern so the latest report of the intergovernmental panel on climate change released on monday has warned that multiple climate change induced disaster in the next two decades even is a strong action is taken to reduce so it has said the ability of human beings and natural systems to cope with the changing climate was already being tested and further rise in global warming would make it even more difficult to adapt nothing that over 3.5 billion people over 45% of global population were living in areas highly vulnerable so as we can see that 45% of the population is uh, in pop global population were living in areas that is highly vulnerable to climate change the report identifies india is one of the vulnerable hot spot within several regions and important cities facing every high risk of climate disasters such as flooding sea level rise and the heat waves so these four issues that we are suffering like uh, like the here is flooding here is sea level rise and the heat waves what exactly the issue is concerned so latest warning so latest warning have come like sixth assessment report which talks about what climate change impact risk and, and vulnerabilities and adaptation options the first part report was released in august last year and the that one was concentrated around the scientific basis of climate change the third and final part of the report which will be look into the possibilities of reducing emission is expected to come out in april 2022 so basically uh the first of which had come out in 1990 the most comprehensive evaluation of the state of the earth climate hundred of expert go through every available pieces of relevant published scientific information to prepare a common understanding of the changing climate the four subsequent assessment reports each thousand of this is no needed because four times its report has been published in 1995 2022 2001 2007 2015 and what were the issue that global response to climate change that was the this have formed the basis of the global response to climate change the four times the report has been published by the ipcc the earlier and the result was not in the favor of most of the countries so basically the report does not say anything remarkably new over the years each assessment report has built on the work of previous ones so as a four times the report has been published and adding more evidence information and data so that most of the conclusions about climate change and its impact have the greater clarity certainty and wealth of new evidence now than earlier 
So as we can say, the latest, latest report has to be concerned about uh, most of the metropolitan cities of India, which is in the vulnerable section, like mega cities around the world. There is a mega city around the world, like as we can see, flooding in Mumbai and heat waves in Ahmedabad are the common occurrence. So what this report has done and look at the granular data. So first time the IPCC report has looked at the health impact on climate change. It has found that climate change is increasing vector borne disease, vector borne disease and water borne disease like such as like you know malaria, dengue, particularly in subtropical region. Subtropical region is like having like some uh, more heat is to be there like in this part basically in that portion subtropical region. So subtropical region like uh, region of Asia it has also said death related to the circulatory respiratory diabetes diabetic and infectious disease as well as infant mortality. So as we can see like uh, if the vector born and uh, malaria disease if the mother is suffering from the such kind of uh, uh, malaria, uh, malaria or such kind of water borne disease how it possible that they can produce they can have a, a, a having a good birth baby because of that has to be vulnerable if the mother is not healthy we cannot expect to a child uh, a child will be healthy. So in that case water borne disease and, and we are suffering like, like most of the things as subtropical region of Asia. So it has also said death related of circulatory respiratory diabetic infection disease like infant mortality are likely to increase with the rise in temperature, increasing frequency of extreme weather events like heat waves, flooding and droughts. In some parts of India having affected with the flood, some part having with the lots of you know uh, uh, having one one part is uh, suffering from flood, another part is suffering from like uh, droughts. So we have to be uh, facing lots of issues in this regard. Okay. So report has said basically the impact of climate change were far greater, more frequent, and vastly more disruptive than previous understood. So climate change impact on nature are greater than previously assessed. The impact we see today are appearing much faster. They are more disruptive and more widespread than we expect 20 years ago. So basically this report is talking about we have to be reduce greenhouse, ga greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission in the next term of next 20 years. As we have already discussed these things in the Kyoto protocol would substantially reduce the threats and projected damages, they would not eliminate them all if the temperature rise across the threshold of 15 degrees from the pre-industrial time, then many changes could be irreversible. So basically, uh, if the temperature is rises too much, so things will not be, uh, in a, uh, we, we cannot be say that can be the irreversible. So what we need to do it in this regard, So, so basically what we need to do, the need to take adaptation measures is therefore every, that is very important, the report has stressed, it has recognized progress being made to adapt to new situation but pointed out that in most places it was nowhere close to what is required to be done. So most of the places uh, what we have uh, uh, in, the, in the earlier agreement we were not, we are not following these. 
so that's why the that that has to be required to be done so adaptation is essential to reduce harm but it is to be effective it must go hand in hand in hand with emissions reductions in greenhouse gases emission because with increased warning the effectiveness of many adaptation options decline the report has said so basically this report is talking about the fact that uh, these findings are the products of the combined understanding of the largest group of experts on climate so basically ipcc reports on the scientific basis on which countries across the world build their policy responses to climate change these reports on their own are not policy prescriptive so it means that country has to be think about his own so basically we will discuss about some facts about what about the ipcc ipcc which means that intergovernmental panel on climate change with the help of wmo world meteorological organization and unap united nation environmental program so ipcc with the basically is an organization with the help of wmo plus unep so make sure that because these things sometimes will uh, ask in your prelims exam is like ipcc is the um, you know uh, the help of wmo or undp they will ask so the undp is not the answer unep is the answer so about ipcc so we must have some basic uh, uh, nitty gritty about the ipcc international body for assessing the science related to climate change formed in 1988 by the world meteorological organization wmo and the united nation environmental program unep so how you will learn with the help of wmo and with the help of unep united nation environmental program do not make confuse with undp with the unep both have a different organization headquarters in geneva switzerland won 2007 nobel peace prize set up to provide policy makers with regular assessment of the scientific basis of climate change its impact on future risk and option for ad adaptation and mitigation participation is open to all countries to the wmo and united nation which have 195 members so basically participation is open to all members country with the wmo and un united nations it neither monitors climate related programs or data nor conducts any research work make sure that if it say like ipcc conduct research work for the climate change that option would be incorrect so ipcc basically is not conduct any research work it neither monitors climate related parameters or data or not conducts any research work and report is when it is published every 5 to 6 years comes with a comprehensive reports on climate change called assessment reports every 5 to 6 years as we have discussed like four times the report has been already published so basically a uh, 5 to 6 years comes with a comprehensive report on climate change called assessment reports the authors producing the reports in the three working groups like working groups first is the physical science basis working group second is impact adaptation and vulnerability working group third is mitigation of climate change A special reports are assessed meant on a of a scientific issues methodology reports provided practical guidelines for the preparation of greenhouse gas in inventories under the unfccs if you talk about the future is like ipcc assessment provide a scientific basis for government at all level of develop climate related policies balance scientific information because of its scientific and intergovernmental in nature ipcc assessment reports cover the full scientific technical and socio economic assessment of climate change but make sure that it will not publish any reports it also talks about political and economical impacts so sometimes it's, it has mentioned in the in your prelims exam ipcc is also talks about political and economic impact of climate change so that option would be correct because it also talks about it also talk about politics political and economical impact of climate change
So, here is a prelims specific question that is based on IPCC. Try to solve the question first, take your time and then try to solve. Question is, consider the following statement regarding intergovernmental panel on climate change, IPCC. Option, sorry, uh, the first statement is given here. It conducts its own research for assessing climate change. Second one, it is a joint initiative of World Meteorological Organization, WMO and United Nations Development Program. So, if you look at carefully, that was, it is a joint initiative of WMO and UNEP. Recently, we have discussed, it is joint initiative of WMO, which means a uh, <coughs> world, sorry, United Nations Environmental Program, not development, you are not UNDP, it's UNEP. Second statement is incorrect. So, if the second statement is incorrect, this statement is incorrect. The POS is right one, WMO, but what I said, like IPCC is a joint initiative of WMO, World Meteorological Organization plus UNEP. So, if you talk about the statement, the first one, that would be correct one. But if you look at carefully, that is United Nations Development Program. So, the statement second is incorrect. If the statement second is incorrect, here is second, that would be incorrect one. Two only that we cannot say because that would be also correct, incorrect one. Now we are left with one only and neither one or nor two. It conducts its own research for assessing climate change. So that is also incorrect one. So answer would be here D, neither one nor two. It is not conducting its own research only, right. So the answer would be D here, neither one nor two. So, as we can see it here, created in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization WMO and UNEP, that not UNDP, United Nations Development Program is not UNEP, UNEP. The objective of the IPCC is to provide government to all level with scientific information that they can use to develop climate policies. IPCC reports are also a key input into international climate change negotiation. The IPCC is the organizations of governments that are members of the United Nations or WMO. So make sure that IPCC is the organization of the governments that are the members of the United Nations or WMO. IPCC currently has 195 members. So if you're in your exam, there was a statement like in the prelim section, like I sorry, uh, IPCC, IPCC currently has more than 200 members that statement would be incorrect so a statement right in a statement would be ipcc currently has 195 members thousands of people from all over the world contribute to the work on the ipcc the ipcc does not conduct its own research so we have already discussed it's not to conduct its own research so that's why the option d would be correct one If you talk about the second question is here, the concept of carbon credit originated from which of the following? The concept is here carbon credit. So originated from which of the following? First one is Paris Agreement, second one is Montreal Protocol, third one is Quater Protocol and Earth Summit Rio de Janeiro. So carbon credit, make sure the carbon credit originated from which of the following? Take your time and try to solve this question because if your prelims exam is concerned, lots of questions that is has to be uh, based on that. So if you talk about like Kyoto Protocol, so what exactly it is? It is an international treaty to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Kyoto Protocol applies to six greenhouse gases that is CO2, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons or sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride. It is an extension to the 1992 UNFCC. So basically, it was adopted in Kyoto that is placed in Japan on 11 December 1997. When did Kyoto Protocol come into force? Kyoto Protocol came into force on 16th February 2005. How many countries signed a treaty to the Kyoto Protocol is 84 countries. How many countries are parties to Kyoto Protocol is 
192. And which are the countries that are not parties to the Kyoto Protocol? So, Canada, Andorra, United States of America, and South Sudan. So, and it is make sure it is legally binding. So, basically, the answer would be here Kyoto Protocol C is the right answer. Paris Agreement and Montreal, Montreal record is also somehow is important, but make short notes on that. So, that would be uh, asking your exam itself. Now, uh, so as we can see, carbon credit, what exactly it is? Carbon credit. Carbon credit is a generic term of any tradable, sorry, tradable certificate or permit representing the right to emit one ton of carbon dioxide or the equivalent amount of different greenhouse gases. Basically, the carbon credit is a generic term for any tradable certificate or permit. So, like for the IPCC, as we can see that that uh, in a crypto protocol, it has to be permit of how many tons and how many uh, carbon you can release. You can release it, but you have to be in the different form. United Nations in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC developed a carbon credit proposal to reduce worldwide carbon emission in the 1997 agreement known as the Kyoto Protocol. The agreement set binding emission reduction targets for the countries that sign it. Another agreement known as Marrakesh Accords spelled out the rules for how the system would work. So basically in a Kyoto Protocol, it has to be discussed to reduce the emission of carbon as well. And why this section is in use as we have discussed already. So basically uh, IPCC has special reports on global warming. It recently shows that half degree of half degree of warming makes big difference adversely impacting global population and overall ecosystem. It lists four pathways to curb global warming and through which uh, the 1.5 degree target can be achieved. 1.5 degree target which means that it has to be this target is we are going to achieve. Differences in regional climate characteristic between present day and global warming 1.5 degree Celsius and between 1.5 and 2 degree Celsius. It will be key scientific input for upcoming Koto Wise Climate Change Conference in Poland in December 2018. Why half degree matters? Because of the Paris Agreement aims to keep global temperature rise in this century will be below 2 degrees centigrade that is pre-industrial times. The IPCC makes clear that human and economic costs at 2 degree rise are far greater than 1.5 degree rise. Intense heat waves, melting of arctic sea level rise, erratic rainfall, reduction of farm yield and vanishing of living species. As we can see human activities, whatever the human activities is also increasing the temperature. So human activities have warmed the world by 1 degree centigrade. And with another half degree rise, many regions will have extreme impact on temperature, rain on severity or drought. So if the temperature is rise, as we have discussed, the lots of impact we will suffer. Risk of food security and water heat exposure, drought and coastal submergence all increase significantly even for the 1.5 degree Celsius. Evidences show that some regions would experience the largest reduction in economic growth in a 2 degree centigrade scenario because if the area is more prone to flood, in that case what we need, the, the businessman will, will not go over there for the business purpose because he will always having some kind of a speculation like uh, my business will be ruined if we will start from the such, such kind of coastal vulnerable zone or we can say like uh, some such kind of uh, such area which is very prone to uh, uh, flood or drought as well. So that's why it affects our economy as well. So that's why it has mentioned that evidence show that some regions would experience the larger reduction of economic growth in the 2 degree centigrade scenario. So here in this graph, we will understand what exactly it is. So basically extreme heat of global population exposed to severe heat waves, 1.5 degrees to 2 degrees centigrade, 37%. Arctic Ocean free of ice in summer ocean in 100 years, 10% worse because if the sea level rise, as we can see, 
the like uh, the the uh, coral leaves will, will not be uh, will be suffered more in that case decline in annual catch marine fisheries if the 1.5 degree centigrade 2 degree centigrade species loss as we can say plant 1.5 2 degree centigrade species loss like vertebrates like decline in coral reefs 70 1.5 70 to 90 percent 2 degree centigrade 99 percent as we can see and as we have discussed what is the importance coral reefs in that uh, aqua aquatic ecosystem so that is really more important So what we are going to, energy that we have to, what we need to do, energy that renewable energy we have to face, energy efficiency, bureau of energy efficiency in that the case of industry, so what we need to do, we have to focus on recycling and reuses of the resources, land if you talk about wetland conservation we need to do, we have to plant more trees so that uh, we can, uh, we will not face the uh, reduction of CO2, better conservation, buildings like, like we can say like green energy efficient carbon neutral buildings will, will be used so that they will not release more greenhouse gas uh, emission in the environment. Transportation like Bharat stage 4 or odd even policies that has to be adopted in the uh, by the Delhi government as well so that we can we will not release more uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, use of biofuels and battery operated vehicles, electric vehicles that is why government is promoting to electric vehicles. Cities like a smart cities, solid waste management should be here, rooftop solar equipment should be there, graded action response plan we can uh, use it and uh, agriculture like we have to use the like uh, reducing ammonia fertilizer, we will use less fertilizer, we will promote to the organic farming. If you use less fertilizer, if you the organic farming, so we will promoting like uh, because as you can say in the, with the process of bioaccumulation, lots of chemical which has to be used in the agriculture of farmland which have to be uh, produced in the uh, in the cultivated land so at the end they will reach to the consumer one who one who consume that food so somehow it is it is very uh, uh, we can say difficult to uh, manage it but we can follow it we will we will promote organic farming on farm inputs ban on burning of crop waste as well so these steps are uh, are is very important so government need to take it to reduce the carbon emission So, what exactly the present issue is concerned? Like climate change, uh, slow moving disaster, extreme weather, rising sea level, diminishing Arctic sea rise among the among other increasing frequency of disaster. Coral reefs are facing danger of bleaching, which is the zooxanthellae, uh, basically the white part of the coral reefs that has to be uh, faded. And biodiversity and ecosystem is in grave danger by 58 percent. Climate related risk, health, livelihood, food security, water supply, human security that has to be affected. As we can see it here, this rising sea level, evidence of modern rates of sea level rise has been found on emergency in 1863. So when the industrial age intensified and the coincides with evidences of early ocean warming and glacier melting, the study used the we use a global database of sea level records dating to the last 2000 years. So as we can see the rising sea level impacted to the coastal uh, region as well. And here is a snapshot devastation is spring the Chicxulub meteorite impact that killed dinosaurs and many other life forms occurred in spring time. Find a new study published in Asia. The researchers studied uh, growth rings in the bones of equitably preserved fish fossils and reduce this. Additional evidence was provided with the distribution, shape and size of bone cells as we can see it here in this picture. And that is also the dilation is a phenomenon predicted by Albert Einstein and refers to the stretching of time intervals. So stretching of time intervals when moving to at high speeds or passing near. So now we will uh, here it is a UPSC prelims revision with the static subjects that, that, that we will start with the polity section. Okay, so that uh, uh, revision section is here UPSC prelims revision with the static subjects that, and we will start with the polity. So before I am telling about this, what you need to do as you can say the 
like around 15 to 18 question has to be asked in the prelims exam that is based on polity section. As, as we can see in the 2018, 90, 20 and 2021. So what you need to do, you have to be solve this question with yourself. So without helping to the internet, without helping to anyone. So that you can guess the which one, uh, how many questions is going to be correct. Do not be hopeless if the question, if the answer would be incorrect. Because, but make sure that how, where you did mistake. So try a um, uh, notebook, separate notebook and try to uh, write like the remarks and make a separate notebook which have the mistake uh, book or we can say that a remarks a notebook so that you can write about if you are uh, for example if you have read about this subject and still you have incorrect answer you got incorrect answer and so do not try to be hopeless make sure that next time it won't be happen and make sure that where you have the loopholes because reading and solving questions are two are different things sometimes you have you read very well your the concept is quite clear but your attempting the questions is going to be incorrect and that was very uh, you know uh, uh, is in that case you are in the mental kind of mental trauma or, or in the dilemma what I need to do not need to do anything but revise it multiple times okay so question is that consider the following statements the absentee voters refers to a vote cast by someone who is unable to go to the polling station absentee voters which means that a term is basically like one who cannot go which one who is not one who is unable to go to the polling station to cast a vote so that is called absentee voters which have the term it has been used second one the power to include any category of persons like disabled and people over 80 years of age in the absentee voters list lies with the election commission of india so which statement is our correct one so basically what you need to do so in this regard look it very carefully which option would be incorrect correct sometimes that uh, in a, a prelims exam the data is sometimes incorrect but not make sure the not the all the data would be incorrect it has mentioned power to include any category of persons like disabled and people with 80 years of age they are not uh, as you can see the election commission are not defined because think about it yourself 50 if the one, one who is like 50 years of age has occurred or we can say met with a road accident and lost his uh, uh, like food so in that case the he is unable to go to the polling stations though no age is matters here like 80 years of age right so second statement is incorrect one so second statement is here two only is correct incorrect both one and two is also incorrect now we are left with one only and neither one nor two so absentee voters refers to a vote cast by someone who is unable to go to the polling station so yes here one is correct one so absentee voters basically uh, we can say for those one who cannot go to the polling station who are having a, some kind of issue like might be uh, he is suffering from some disease or and, and uh, he is unable to walk that could be anything but no, no age has to be uh, referred by the election commission of india so as we can see the on the recommendation of election commission the ministry of law and social ministry of law and justice amended the election rules 1961 for allowing senior citizens and persons with disabilities in the absentee voter list so senior citizen which means like after uh, 60 years of the age so age by senior citizen has been mentioned and person with and person with disabilities but one who is unable to go to the polling station so that, that is known to be an absentee voters list the absentee voters refers to a vote cast by someone who is unable to go to the polling station so you have to be read between the lines you have to read the options carefully in if the prelims exam is concerned because sometimes the option if the questions and answer and the answer of the question is questions itself if you read it very carefully you got to know okay so this option it might be some kind of uh, having some speculation no this, this could not be the right answer So second, second question is here. So consider following a statement about urban local bodies. So since the enactment of 74th constitution amendment by because 73 is Panchayati Raj constitution and 74th is a about urban local bodies. So 74th constitution amendment act elections to urban local bodies is held once in every five years in all states in India. Second statement. 
as per the amended municipal corporation act of 1888 mayors are directly elected by the people in all states and make sure here is the word is incorrect one so in that case you need to choose which one is incorrect not correct one so take your time and then solve it and find it out which one could be the possible answer So as we can see, the enactment of 74th Constitution Amendment Act, election to urban local bodies held once in every five years. Yes, that is a rule. But most of, many of the states as not holding election that is on the <coughs> every five years. So one is incorrect one. So incorrect one, first one is incorrect. Second one, as per the amend, amended Municipal Corporation Act 1888, Mayors are directly elected by the people in all states. So yes, so second one is also correct, incorrect one. So answer would be C. Not in the all states, some of the states mayors are directly elected. So first and second would be incorrect. So as we can see it here. In some state elections to urban local bodies have not been held for years, defeating the lofty goal of decentralized governance. Because as we can see, uh, decentralization of the powers, that's why the 73rd and 74th constitution has to be amended. But in here, we can see in some state like Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, mayors are directly elected by the people. But if you talk about like Delhi, here mayors are not directly elected by the people right so here is the c1 correct or c1 was the answer okay here is the very uh, important question is here the vice president elected of india is elected by the electoral college consisting of dash so we, we have to be uh, cover the lakshmi Kant like vice president the role of vice president you must know and who is the vice president the Rajya Sabha chair Rajya Sabha election uh, sorry speaker is known to be a vice president of India so vice president of India is elected by the electoral college electoral college is not a such kind of college where the person is studying electoral college which means that who can cast vote right so you have to find it out in this question like vice president of India is elected by the electoral college consisting of what option one Elected members of the parliament, second one, nominated member of the parliament, elected member of the state legislative assemblies. It means that the question is basically concerned who can give vote in the in the vice president election of India. But vote con kar sakta hai, you have to find it out in the case of vice president of India. So we have to be think about the election system like in the case of vice president, in the case of president. Take your time and think about which one could be the answer. So basically, as we can say, the in the case of vice president election, both house of parliament, here is the parliament. So here it is Rajya Sabha, and here it is Lok Sabha. So both the member of Rajya Sabha MP. And Lok Sabha MP is going to cast vote in the presidential election. Sorry, vice president election. So, elected member is also, nominated member is also. But in the case of president, only elected member would be, can, can cast vote. Not the nominated members which are to be nominated by the president. So, make sure that in the case of the word can be removed like vice, only president election. So, only elected members of the parliament. So, okay, if we change the, the right answer would be here. 
1 and 2 which is the option C. But what about if we eliminate the word is wise word. The president of India elected by the electoral college of consists of what? So in the case of president, so what we need to do elected member of parliament, not nominated members of the parliament. In the case of president and elected members of a state legislative assembly, yes that can be correct. So one and three in that case would be the answer as A1. So we have to be covered who can cast vote in the case of president election, who can cast vote in the case of vice president election. So as we can see it here, the vice president is elected by the method of indirect elections. Vice president of India is elected by indirect election. He is elected by the members of a electoral college consisting of members of both house of parliament which is the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Thus the electoral college is different from the electoral college of the election of the, of the president in the full and two respect. What is the difference between president election and vice president election? The first we can say it consists of the both elected and nominated members of the parliament. But in the case of president, only elected members can cast a vote. Make sure that in the case of president, only elected member can cast a vote. But in the case of vice president, elected and nominated both can vote. Second one does not include the members of the state legislative assemblies. In the case of what? In the case of vice president election, it means uh, MLA of Uttar Pradesh cannot cast vote in the case of vice president. So it does not include the members of state legislative assemblies in the cast of president but the elected members of the state legislative assemblies are included in the case of president election. It means a uh, member of legislative assembly which is a MLA of a state legislative assembly which is the Punjab or we can say Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh MLA can cast vote in a president election and Delhi, Pondicherry and Jammu and Kashmir. So it means that we can say state with legislative assemblies make sure that a state with legislative assembly can also cast vote in the case of president election like uh, Delhi with a state and having uh, legislative assembly can also cast vote like Puducherry having a state uh, union territories but with legislative assembly can cast vote their MLA's member can cast vote in the case of President election. So this is the nitty gritty of the subject you need to keep in mind, keep on mind while solving the question. Are the fourth questions. So consider the following statement about Election Commission of India. So first statement is here. Election Commission of India is a permanent constitutional body. Statement one. Second one, Chief Election Commission can be removed from office only through the impeachment of by parliament. So we have heard the term impeachment, uh, the, if you have to be removed the president of India with the help of impeachment only. So the term, second statement is here, Chief Election Commissioner can be removed from the office only through the impeachment by parliament. Third one, if election are being held only for the state legislature, legislature the expenditure is born entirely by the concerned state. For example, if the election held in the UP, so central government will not share, will not share money to the, for held in the election. A state has own money you have to be spent. So here the, which one of the above statements is a, or our correct one. So did it very carefully. So basically, First one, Election Commission of India is a permanent constitutional body. If the term is used permanent constitutional body, which means that at the time of uh, <coughs> our, our constitution is in force, like 26 November 1949, in that time there was a, uh, you know, uh, having some, uh, there has been a established this commission. So at the time of, once we adopt the constitution. So yes, it's a permanent constitutional body. The statement first one is correct. Election Commission of India is a permanent constitutional body. Second one, Chief Election Commission Commissioner can be removed from the office only through impeachment by parliament. Some students is thinking about well, the word is only is sometimes incorrect but no, in that case this is the correct one. Chief Election Commissioner can be removed with the help of only impeachment which has to be held in the, the case of president also. 
तो स्टेटमेंट वन एंड टू इज करेक्ट वन वेर इज वन एंड टू द बोथ द ऑप्शन इज इन ओनली सी एंड डी सो वन ए एंड बी कैन बी इजली इलिमिनेट we can easily eliminate the a and b so now we are left with the c and d option third one if elections are being held only for the state legislature the expenditure is borne entirely by the concerned state so if the if the election is going on in the punjab so punjab government has to be spent on election not the central government if the if some kind of those election which are required like some state and sometimes uh, central government also so in that case 1 2 3 is the correct answer so as we can see it here election to parliament and legislature of every state to be office of president and vice president of india election commission of india is a permanent constitutional body the election commission was established in accordance with constitution on 25th january 1950 the president appoints chief election commissioner and election commissioners they have tenure of 6 years chief election commission tenure is 6 years or up to the age of 65 years whichever is earlier right they enjoy the same status and receive salary and pox as available to judges of supreme court of india make sure that jo hamare election commissioner hote hain unko same pox or facility di jati hai supreme court ke judges ki tarah so they enjoy the same status and receive salary and pox as available to judges of supreme court make sure not cgi so chief election commissioner can be removed from the office only through impeachment by parliament if elections are being held only for the parliament the expenditure is borne entirely by the union government in the case of lok sabha election the union government will borne the entire expenditure while up for the election being held only for the state legislature the expenditure is borne entirely by concerned state in case of simultaneous elections to be to the parliament and state legislature the expenditure is shared equally between the union union and state government for capital equipments expenditure related to preparation for electoral rolls and and scheme for electorals and utility cars to the expenditure is shared equally this expenditure is shared equally so this is the things we have discussed about election commission of india okay the next one parliament can make laws on the subject enumerated in the state list to give effect to international agreements treaties and convention with so obvious parliament having authority to make laws right if the parliament can make laws on subject listed in the state list but make sure in the fact of international agreements treaties and in convention in that case what the parliament can do it required consent of the all the states consent of majority of the state consent of the state concerned without the consent of any states so we can say parliament can make laws that is mentioned in the state list and it required without the consent of any state so how the uh, like raj sabha and lok sabha power can be distinguished like in the case of like uh, all india service raj sabha have a special power sometime raj sabha have a special power to make a amendment in the state list as well so here we had mentioned parliament so so parliament can make laws on the subject listed in the state list without the consent of any state if the it is a international agreements if the international agreements international treaties international convention is concerned in that case without the consent of any state parliament can make laws so as we can see it here article 253 parliament has power to make any law for the whole or any part of the territory of india for implementing any treaty agreement or convention with any other country or countries or any other decisions made at any international conference associations or other body so article 253 is having parliament having having a special power to make a law in the state subject if the it is it is the uh, like sovereignty of the 
India. In that case, Parliament can make laws. Okay. Sixth one is here. Consider the following statement regarding emergency provision in Indian Constitution. Here is emergency provision in Indian Constitution. All types of emergency proclaimed by the President has to be approved by the Parliament. Statement 1. Financial emergency is in operation indefinitely till the presidential president revokes it. Third one, in the case of national emergency, approval of half of the state legislature and parliament is required. And the option is which one of the above statement is are correct. So basically, do not try to be like ki all words honge to galat honge because some of the like uh, questions in the early previous UPSC prelims. Where the like if the if the uh, question is like all some do not try to uh, trap in such uh, questions. Make sure if you have a good command over the static subjects, if you have read carefully, if you have read like, M. Lakshmi Kant, you are able to solve the questions. Sometimes the question is beyond of M. Lakshmi Kant also. So if you have read like the some question that is based on current affairs also because 2020-21 there was a question of judicial interrogation, right? So that was not covered by the M. Lakshmi Khan, but you have to be your own brain. So you have to be own like uh, discretion to which one could be the answer. That, that was uh, not too much hard to uh, this uh, to solve it. So take your time, 20, 30 seconds and think about which can be the possible answer. Okay, so if you talk about the first one option, all types of emergency proclaimed by the president has to be approved by the parliament. Yes, first statement, correct one. Financial emergency is in operation indefinitely till the president remove, revokes it. That could be the also answer. In the case of national emergency approval, half of the state legislature. Yeah, this one is incorrect one. If not required, half of the state legislature. Only parliament uh, authority is required in the case of national emergency. So third one is incorrect. Where is third? Third is here. So it is incorrect one. Third is here. It is incorrect one. One and two is the right answer. So any types of emergency proclaimed by the president is approved by the parliament. In the case of in the case of national emergency, only parliament consent is required. Right. So one and two is the correct one. So national emergency requires approval from the parliament only. 